Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Something about the man Jesus. Hey, let us talk about Jesus. If you consider Jesus, he was every inch a man like any other man. We know of him through the gospel accounts, but do we know him in the true sense of the word? Today, I want us to look at something that he did. Something simple, but that was the epicenter of his three years, three plus years of ministry that culminated in a brutal and horrific death outside the walls of the historic city of Jerusalem. Listen to this piece of scripture. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Mark 1, 15-19 If we never knew about Jesus, and if we only heard of him in this first chapter of Mark, we would soon realize that Jesus was different, that he was more than the average man. So here is Jesus, the man from Nazareth, walking by the Sea of Galilee. That was nothing strange because the sea was a busy economic trading center, mainly the buying and selling of fish. With that, there was also a thriving boating industry. Jesus, this young preacher, has been going around Galilee preaching. Jesus could well have been seen as one of the many Jewish young men whose religious devotion led them to publicly preach around town. But listen to this. This itinerant preacher walks along the beach and sees two fishermen, brothers, tending to their boat and nets. Jesus goes up to them and say, Hey, fellas, I want you to follow me because I'm going to change your profession. I'm going to make you do the same kind of work, but under my leadership, you are going to fish for humans. Pause and let that sink in for a moment. Guess what? Immediately, they stopped what they were doing and became the first recruits of the Jesus ministry. Who, who does that? Who just comes up and picks out two arbitrary young men who are working and asks them to follow him so they can become fishers of men? And they did. It's ridiculous. But is it? You see, Jesus came to earth to redeem people from their sin. And as we later found out, it was not just for that township in Palestine, but for the whole world and for centuries to come. Jesus' mission was not only to preach and teach there in Galilee and Nazareth, as important as that was. Jesus came to save people, and although he had divine skills that could do anything, Jesus chose to recruit not just these two young men, but ten others, and together they were going to change the world. So let us dig deeper into the life and work of Jesus and his band of young men who all left their regular jobs, didn't say goodbye to their families, having no idea what was going to happen. But they followed him. Jesus never lost sight of his mission, the purpose for coming to earth. One time, he told some people that he came that people might have abundant life. On another occasion, he spoke of himself as being the light of the world, and anyone who comes to him would no longer walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So as casual as the recruitment process might have seemed, Jesus was deliberate. He was intentional in putting together a diverse group of men from Galilee to fish for people. During the time leading up to his timely death, they saw him heal people of all kinds of sicknesses. They saw miracles. They saw him walking on waters. They saw him speaking peace to a raging storm while they were in a boat, and the storm died immediately. They saw him feed thousands of people with a boy's lunch, and there were leftovers. They saw him raise some people from the dead. Then one day, Jesus told them something strange. He was talking to them about going back to heaven, and in the middle of his speech, he said something like this. 
Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 14, verses 12 to 13. Then shortly after the miraculous resurrection, how he came back from the grave after that hor horrible death three days earlier, Jesus met this group of guys having lost one, and that was when he told them the big mission that he was training them for all this time. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. That was it. From the day he called the first set of young fellows along the shores of the Sea of Galilee until over three years later, Jesus trained them in the art and knowledge of fulfilling this big assignment. You guys will change the world through the preaching of the gospel. That is how you and I heard that gospel. One bunch of ordinary young men hundreds of years ago with no special skills was coached by Jesus and released with power to spread the Jesus message. That mission continues until today and guess what? Jesus is still in the business of recruiting people for this great mission. He wants to, you to be involved in changing the world by leading people to accept the gift of salvation that he, Jesus, still offers. It is an exciting mission and it works, but it needs you to take it a little further to your family, to your community, in your world. Jesus is still recruiting people, my friend. Will you follow him? and fish for people out of the sea of sinfulness into the new life that only Jesus can give? There is something special about this man, Jesus.